In today's video, how does creatine work? What's going on guys? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com and I have a special guest today, my man Stephen Bogrand. And we're going to call this Science with Stephen because Stephen is about to graduate from the University of South Florida with a degree, a master's degree in exercise science. That's right. You already got your bachelor's degree. Yeah, that's uh, been done. And we're twinning today. Yeah. And you might be saying, Paul, why are you guys twinning? Well, because it's freaking winter in Florida and we're barely surviving this 65 degree weather. I'm being silly. It's very nice out. Yeah. But we put sleeves on because you know what? We don't really get to. Yeah. We can wear socks too because it's that chilly out. So today's a topic um, that I often gloss over. And you know, I always talk about this, guys. One of my favorite things to do is talk about topics that I've since discarded as worth talking about, but I have never explained them to you or to my audience. And as you know, my audience is very valuable to me. So when Stephen brought up the topic of creatine, creatinine, the whole process, I thought, you know what, there's a topic that, gosh, I was probably reading about 15 years ago when, when creatine was really hot when it first came out on the market. And it was something that uh, I really loved and when I first used it, I saw a massive benefit and I'm, so it's something that because it's been kind of in the back of my mind for so long, I, I don't really think of it as like a hot topic, but I still get questions all the time. Oh, yeah. How should you use creatine? Yeah. Should you cycle off creatine? Yeah. What the fuck does creatine do? <laughs> Sorry for the F bomb. But you get the idea. So let's talk a little bit up because we got my man Steve here who's got the science fresh on his brain. So first of all, without getting too deep, let's talk about what is creatine monohydrate and why is it important? All right, so when you're looking at creatine, uh, what it's essentially going to do is it sort of works as a backup or a reserve for the energy systems of your body. So everybody says, hey, red meat has a lot of creatine in it, but when you take that creatine, what it allows your body to do is it increases those reserves of energy. Um, essentially what you're doing is it's going to have creatine phosphate, right? So it's putting a phosphate group on the end of that, which molecularly, like at the lowest levels, yep. it's using that to go to ATP, which is the mus or the muscle's energy system. Yep. So it's essentially giving you a very quick way to redo the muscle's energy system on a very fast level, and it's increasing your body's stores of that. Um, so what we can see actually is that for things like maximal strength, we can actually see once the body has been uh, fully saturated with creatine yep. is that we have increases in muscular strength yep. attributed to that as well. Now what a lot of people will ask is, okay, I want to take creatine but I don't <clears throat> want to get a bunch of water weight. So okay. can you explain why there is an association with creatine monohydrate and water weight? Absolutely. So when we look at creatine, it is stored within the muscle cell. Now, it doesn't just take that grainy little powder and say, hey, in your muscle, there we go, everything's good. Um, nice. It has to be stored with water. Um, I think what- Hence the name, hydrate. <laughs> Just like carbohydrate is stored with water, right. monohydrate is stored with water. Correct. Um, so I think the misunderstanding or the misconception that most people get is that water weight's a bad thing every single time. So, <laughs> right. Um, the difference being that when water is being held within the muscle cell, we actually look better. Yes. Um, we don't lose definition, we gain definition, yes. right? So it's a good kind of water weight that we store there. Yeah, and that's immediately when I start thinking about the first time I started taking creatine back in the 90s was within about a week I had gained about five pounds. Now granted, my diet was probably piss poor back then. So I was probably lacking the natural creatine that most people would get from a, a healthy red meat diet. Right. But I also think back, um, and you know Benson, a client of mine yeah. who is uh, ovo pescatarian, and he was in contest prep and started taking creatine monohydrate, five grams a day, and within a week he had put on five pounds and looked leaner than ever. And again, because it was dietarily missing from his diet, right. I think he was an over responder or hyper responder to taking creatine monohydrate. So let's talk about how to take it properly because I think that's another big question. So we know it has benefits. It's going to improve our training uh, quality. It's going to give us some muscle fullness potentially. Correct. So what is the best way to take it? So a lot of people ask what the timing is, right? So yes. when should I take creatine? Um, the first thing is, is if you're just starting creatine, you have to go through a loading phase. Um, and depending how much you want to take will depend how long of a loading phase you need to go through. 
Uh, you can do a simple like five to ten grams a day loading phase, yep. and it might take up to about a month, you know, two to three weeks, and then your muscles are fully saturated. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can take anywhere from 15 to 25 for a week, yep. and then back off to say five grams a day for yep. men, three grams a day for women. And then so what that's going to do is obviously you bypass that wait time of having to have the entire month to saturate the muscle cells and then getting there in about a week. So digestively, does creatine kind of respond well with our digestive systems? Should we take that 20 grams in a single serving or should we space it out over the day if we're going to load it? Absolutely not. Uh, you, you definitely want to space it out. Um, I would recommend doing 5 grams for things. So if yep. you're going to take 15 grams, take 5 grams in the morning, in the afternoon, at night. Uh, 20 grams, so we split that up evenly. Uh, otherwise, your body just tends to like push excess through. Yeah, and, and this was my first experience with creatine 15 years ago. I did the loading phase. It was what all the supplement companies recommended because they knew if they saw the bros putting five to 10 pounds on the scale in a week, that everyone was gonna go out and buy their version of creatine monohydrate. Right. Um, so I definitely did that. I definitely did the 20 grams for a week and I noticed the difference. What I suggest now with my clients is because most people don't really wanna see that drastic of a shift, is I say for women three grams, for men five grams a day. Yep. Um, and for the timing, I generally say take it with your pre-workout, but here's why. It's not because there's a magic time. It's right. that most pre-workout formulas now contain creatine monohydrate. So it's just about being consistent with it. So on the days that you take your pre-workout, it's in there for you. You can maybe add some more if it's not dosed with enough. Right. Or you can just remember that I need to take my creatine pre-workout. Right. So it's a mental thing because I've done this before where I've kind of cycled off pre-workouts and then I've realized, man, I haven't had creatine in like three weeks. Yeah. And then that's when you start to notice like you don't look as full or like you miss a rep in the gym and you're like, what's going on? And you'll actually, like I paid attention and said, oh man, so now I make sure I'm taking creatine year round. Yep. So and that leads to the next question. Should we stop taking creatine? Are there any health reasons to stop. So interestingly enough, there's not going to be any real research that shows that creatine is bad for your health. Um, there are some interesting research articles out there that show that creatine can actually have positive impacts on things like Alzheimer's and some other uh, odd things like that as well. Okay. Um, but there's no... Those are correlation though, right? Yeah, that's really okay. more correlational study stuff. Um, so there's really nothing that says, hey, if I you know, take creatine all the time, bad things are going to happen. Yeah, I think, and that's some more research that came out, you know, when it first came out, you're supposed to take it for like six weeks on, four weeks off, or whatever the, the cycle was. Now, I think the research that's more commonly quoted now basically says it's safe to take year round. Correct. Because it, it is something that we can get from red meat, and so I think the body is adapted to consuming it, as long as you're not one of the poor responders to it. There are going to be some people, um, just like any other food, I mean, nuts make some people you know have an allergic reaction so some people are going to have an issue with uh, creatine as a digestive issue yeah so let's talk about now what happens when we go to the doctor and we hear the term your creatinine is high let's talk about what the two the two terms mean all right so it's always a scary thing because when the doctor tells you something is too high you're like ah right yeah. um, and so when we hear creatinine is too high we automatically associate that with creatine. And so there is a kind of association, yeah. but it's important that we understand that so that we understand what, hey, my creatinine is high actually means. Uh, creatinine is a substance that is going to be released into the bloodstream uh, from muscle protein breakdown. So essentially what happens is when you go work out, you hurt your muscles, right? You get micro tears, some of that goes into the bloodstream, so we automatically have heightened creatinine levels. Yep. Um, so if you're active, if you're doing long runs, if you're lifting weights, if you're pushing it in the gym, after those workouts, your blood creatinine levels are gonna be higher. Yes. Um, so the doctors are gonna be worried about that for uh, reasons because your kidneys can have issues handling too much. However, a normal workout routine isn't gonna do that. Um, a normal exercise routine isn't going to do that. Uh, yeah, I think the biggest thing that, you know, the last time I went to get my blood work done, the doctor was like, everything looks great except your creatinine and your bun levels are too high, so we need to go check you for kidney failure. And I was immediately like, what, what are you talking about, kidney failure? And, he, you know, as he explained it to me, I thought, oh, well, that's a byproduct of training. But, but general practitioners of medicine are not familiar with that. They're taught to look at a range. And if you're not within that range, then you're good. So here's what I suggest. For anyone that's going to get a blood test and you train hard and you exercise, endurance run, or I like to think of it if you're consistently sore. Right. If you're kind of always breaking stuff down and being sore. Not if you're just walking around the neighborhood. But if you're doing that and you're going to get a blood test, 
if you don't want to scare your doctor, don't train for 48 hours before you do the blood test because usually the blood tests are fasted in the first thing in the morning. So I used to go in like seven in the morning for my, my health checkup and get the blood drawn. The first time I did that, the doctor was like, we need to go see a kidney specialist. I said, let me redo it. I didn't train for 48 hours, went back, everything was fine. So you just, I never say go against doctor's orders. Right. You want to listen to your doctor because just because it's normal doesn't mean you don't have kidney failure. So don't, right. don't ignore it if your doctor thinks it seriously. Ask if you can redo the test or just with this knowledge, kind of at least take maybe 24 or 48 hours off before you go into get your blood drawn. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. yeah, so creatinine, a byproduct of training. Creatine is an amino acid stored in your muscle that's going to make training better, recovery better. I don't think there is a more researched topic more researched supplement probably ever. No, right? It's, right. And, and Maybe it, protein? Yeah, protein, but I don't even consider it a supplement yeah. because, you know. Necessary for life. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's in food, but then again, so is creatine. So yeah. you, can, you can define what a supplement is. For us, I think creatine is just a part of our normal diet. I happen to eat a lot of red meat, so I don't feel the necessity to stuff myself with creatine all the time. I feel like five grams a day is enough. Yeah, and I'm on the opposite end of the spectrum. I eat a lot of white meats, chickens, fish, that kind yeah. of thing. And so, for me, it's definitely important in my diet. Yeah, so that's it guys. Creatine, it's very good. You need creatine monohydrate. That's the one that's the most researched. It's, it's the most bioavailable. You know, there's gonna be some debate on different kinds, but creatine monohydrate, it's very cheap, very easy to get. Um, it works. You can just throw it in anything. Yes, it tastes like ass, but it mixes easily with any other solution that you're gonna have, and uh, you're gonna get some benefits out of it. So I think that's gonna be it for Science with Steven for this week. If you enjoyed this video and this topic, please comment below. Steven has his own YouTube channel where he uh, has poor lighting and uh, poor audio quality, but we're working on it. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start making him a regular on my channel because I feel like there's a valuable addition here because he's looking at the fitness world through a different lens than I have. Um, as me being the old guy and him being the young guy, the up and comer, I think it's good that we get these video topics um, kind of fresh and, and reboot them because yep. there are thoughts that people and questions that are still out there. So comments and questions below for me, for Steven, or ideas for other topics. If creatine was something that you enjoyed and there's another supplement or another topic that you think would be valuable, let us know. Cool. All right, guys, we'll talk to you tomorrow. I'll talk to you tomorrow because I'm going to Miami. NPC Nationals with my girl Lauren Dana Miller, Emily Hayden, and guess who? Chad Nutter. So you know the footage is going to get real. All right, guys. Talk to you soon. I'm by myself.